Welcome back to Kinguru. Today I'm taking a look back on a review that I did a month or two ago comparing three new water blocks for RTX 30 reference edition cards. I had one from EK, one from Alpha Cool, and one from Corsair. The outcome of that review concluded that overall the best one out of the three was the EK block. The Alpha Cool block had some issues with memory temperatures. And then the Corsair XG7, well that was kind of average across the board. Corsair wasn't satisfied with coming second or third in that review, so what they've done is sent us two more samples of the XG7 to test, and that'll rule out whether there was any issue with the original sample. And it also gives us an idea of the manufacturing tolerances, having three samples of the same product to test. Uh, so. That's going to be interesting to find out, see if there's any improvement with these two new samples. And as well as that, I'm also going to be trying out the EK Quantum Vector Active Backplate for the RTX 3080 that we'll be using in this test. You may have seen, I think recently, Linus had just released a video using the Active Backplate on a 3090, which obviously give us improvements to the memory temperature because on the 3090 on the back of the card you've also got some memory modules unlike the 3080 where all the VRAM memory chips are on the front of the card so it's going to be interesting to see if the active backplate offers any benefits in terms of cooling of these 30 series cards whether you know removing any residual heat from the back of the card using this active backplate will be beneficial. But before we dive into that second round of testing, if you enjoy this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to get notifications of future content. If you wanna help support us, head over to our store, pick up some merch, or you could always subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, kinguru.net is there for all the in-depth hardware reviews, and to catch up on some tech news. So I still have the test bench set up in the same configuration from last time. So there's the Z390 Aorus Extreme motherboard. CPU is a Core i9-9900KS. CPU cooler is the Cooler Master Hyper 212. I didn't want to introduce any heat into the loop with the CPU. 32 gig of Aorus RGB memory power supply is a Seasonic Prime PX850 power supply. Then for the loop, it's a 360 mil EK rad, three EK Vardar S fans, and the Quantum Kinetic TB120 pump res combo. So that's all the same. And I still have the EK block fitted to the Zotac Trinity RTX 3080 card. So because of that, I may as well show you the active backplate first. So to look at this, you would think it is just a standard water block, which it kind of is. You've got the same kind of plexi front attached to the backplate. Uh, it does look very much like a water block. You just got a larger terminal on the top here because this terminal is going to replace the one on the water block and it'll cover both the active backplate and the water block on the front. So you don't get much with it. You don't get an installation manual. You'll have to look online for the installation manual, but you get a bunch of thermal pads, a little bag full of screws, and one of these um, EK Allen keys that snap if you put too much pressure on them. To install the active backplate, you'll only need some basic tools. So you'll need a Phillips screwdriver, a small Allen key to remove the original terminal block, and a pair of scissors to cut the thermal pads to size. There are three different thickness thermal pads. There's one mil, 1.5 mil, and two mil. The RTX 3080 installation requires two mil and 1.5 mil thermal pads. 3090, you need to use some one mil pads as well. So for our installation, we're using a 3080, so it'll just be 1.5 and two mil pads. So to begin the installation, the first thing you need to do if you've already got your card assembled, you'll have to remove the standard back plate. So just remove the screws. And if you're installing the back plate at the same time as installing the block, once you've got the water block attached to the card, you'll need to remove the terminal from the top. So 
So just completely loosen off the three screws and then that terminal just removes from the card. For the next step, we're actually working on the back plate. So we need to cut the thermal pads to size. EK doesn't do that for you. So you need to take your scissors, follow the online installation manual and cut these to the correct size for each part of the back plate. The active bike plate comes with a metal plate covering up the side of the terminal block that attaches to the GPU block. So all we need to do to remove that metal plate is just loosen off the screws that hold it in position. And then that plate can be removed and saved in case you need it later. And then to attach the back plate, make sure the O-rings are in the correct position on the terminal block and then carefully place the back plate over the back of the PCB make sure it's aligned with the screw holes just loosely install the screws into the back plate just to make sure everything's aligned put in the three screws into the terminal block make sure the o-rings are still in position you might have to squeeze the card together a bit and then tighten those three terminal block screws And to fit the I.O. shield, you just have to remove two of the screws from the back plate again. Put your I.O. shield back in place and then tighten those two screws back up. And then you can do the final tightening of the rest of the back plate screws. So that's how the active back plate looks once it's installed. Looks pretty similar on the back and the front of the card. There's one or two things to mention about this installation actually. The screws that come with the back plate to actually retain the back plate, not the ones that go into the terminal, they're eight mil screws. This top one here, I had a bit of trouble getting that one to tighten up fully. Now either the screws are not quite long enough, could do with being another one or two mil longer, or the thread in the standoff that that screw threads into wasn't quite up to the end of the standoff and it just wouldn't catch and it wouldn't tighten up. Luckily, I had a bit longer black screw from a GPU water block, so I managed to get that fully tightened up. I'd suggest that those screws wanna be another couple of mil longer to get a bit more purchase on them and tighten them up fully. So that's one minor issue. Then this next issue is probably not gonna affect probably anybody because I doubt anybody will probably be running an air cooler with this water block, uh, but it is an issue for me. I had to actually spin the terminal block 180 degrees because when you put it in position in the stock setup, the, uh, the outlet here was too close to the air cooler. So I had to spin that 180 degrees. And also when you get the card installed in the PCIe slot, when you come to uninstall the card in the future, you can't get to the retaining clip on the back of the PCIe slot. It's gonna make it very difficult. You probably have to wedge a screwdriver underneath or something like that to release the locking mechanism. So no major issues, but just something to think about. If you do have to disassemble your system, it's gonna be quite difficult to get that card out without, like I say, wedging something down there to unlock that locking mechanism. Anyway, that's the installation complete. To actually install the active backplate to the card, it took about 10 or 15 minutes and that included cutting the thermal pads to size and sticking those on. Everything else is installed, the loop is filled, there's no leaks, we've got RGB lighting on both sides of the card, which is obviously great. Let's get on with some testing. The test bench is in the exact configuration as it was with the previous tests when we tested the other GPU water blocks, and the test room is the same. Ambient temperature is between 18 to 20 degrees as it was before, so let's see what effect this active backplate has on the thermal performance. I've not planned to spend a lot of time testing this active backplate. This was more of a side note. The main purpose of this video really was to test those new samples 
of the Corsair XG7 blocks. So what I've done is I've just run the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme stress test, the 30 times loop, same test as last time. And as you can see, with the active backplate fitted, it doesn't have much effect on the GPU core temperature. It has very slightly lowered the VRAM temperature by a degree or two, but for somebody that is using this card, just specifically for gaming, probably not really worth investing in the active backplate if you're hoping that it will lower GPU core temperatures and memory temperatures. If you just want it to look good, then it certainly does a good job of that. If you are using the 3090 though, I do expect that you will see some gains when it comes to the VRAM temperature especially. If you are thinking about buying one of those EK Active backplates for the Zotac Trinity specific one, the one we used in this video, it's gonna set you back about 117 euros. That's the reason why I said, if you're just thinking of using it on a 3080 for gaming, might not be very cost effective for the gains that you're going to get. If you just want it for the RGB, then fair enough. So with that out of the way, we now move on to the main reason why we're making this video, which is to test these two new samples of the Corsair XG7 water block. I'm not going to go over the installation process. I did that in the last video. If you want to see that, I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video. Uh, but yeah, just going to get on with this now. Install the first sample, run some tests, remove that one, install the second new sample, run the same tests again, and then I'll be back with some results. Okay, so fast forward a day, both new XG7 samples have been on the test bench and tested. And I also retested our original sample just to be sure that there was no issue with the installation or anything that could have adversely affected the results. Test bench is in the exact same specification and configuration as it was in the original review. CPU is running at stock frequency and the memory is running at 3600 megahertz XMP. For the testing, we've run the same three tests as in the original review. So the first test is the 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme Stress Test run in a 30 times loop with the GPU at stop frequency, but with the power limit at 105%. For the second test, we ran the Time Spy Extreme 30 times loop again but with the GP overclocked, so 140 megahertz overclock on the GPU core and 500 megahertz on the graphics memory. And then for the final test, we ran the 3D Mark Port Royal stress test, which includes ray tracing with the GPU overclocked, again with 140 megahertz on the GPU core and 500 megahertz on the VRAM. So in the first Time Spy Extreme Stress Test, XG7 New Sample 1 recorded a reduction of 3.2 degrees Celsius in GPU core temperature compared with the original. This was almost exactly mirrored by New Sample 2 which produced 2.9 degrees C average GPU core temperature reduction compared with our original sample. 
However, both new samples produce slightly increased average GPU memory temperature than the original sample, around 3 degrees Celsius higher. During the second time spy extreme stress test with the GPU core and GPU memory overclocked, we saw a similar pattern emerge. The average GPU core temperature of both new samples reduced by over 4 degrees Celsius compared with the original sample, while memory temperature reduction was less predominant this time around. In the Port Royal ray tracing stress test, it is more of the same again the GPU core temperature of the new samples are both lower than the original sample. Memory temperature is slightly up which means that when compared with the other two GPU blocks from the original review the XG7 is closer in terms of GPU core temperature performance now. So what does this mean then? Well it could mean a couple of things. The original XG7 sample that we reviewed in the original video that was a very early sample could have even been a pre-production sample. Corsair could have refined its manufacturing processes since then. That could be why we're seeing much closer tolerances with the two new samples compared with that original sample. Or it could just simply be that the original XG7 was just a bad sample, but still within Corsair's tolerance. Either way, it shows that both of the new samples are an improvement over the original, and they've closed that performance gap to our favorite from the original review. However, it doesn't change my opinion of the XG7. I still think it's a very handsome looking GPU block. It's extremely easy to install. Corsair has done a great job with that installation process. It's almost idiot proof. However, thermal performance is still a little behind the likes of EK and AlphaCool. But with these new samples, that gap has closed. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, revisiting the Corsair XG7 water block and checking out those EK Active backplates. If you have, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you've liked the video. If you want to help support KitGuru, head over to our store, pick up some merch. You can also subscribe to our Patreon. Either way, it really helps us. And as always, KitGuru.net is there to catch up on all the in-depth hardware reviews and catch up on some tech news. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you next time.